Hello and greetings. My name is Sushil Kumar, and today I'm joined by two very senior IT ops professionals uh, uh, who have decades of experience under the belt, and they are going to talk to us and tell us how AI and machine learning is reshaping how enterprises run their IT operations. Uh, Dan Elswig is uh, uh, architect at Coty, um, and he's responsible for architecting, deploying, and operating all of the IT ops solutions that Coty uses. Uh, Carl Kleinhardt is a VP at Intellinet. Uh, Intellinet, for those of you who don't know, many of you probably already do, is a premier managed service provider. Uh, they specialized in network uh, management, in cloud innovation, as well as information technology uh, services. And they have clients um, that are spread over 25 countries around the globe, right? Thanks, so, sure. Thanks for having me. Great. Yeah, gentlemen, thank you, thank you for being here. Uh, you know, it's always good to hear the actual the field perspective down from the trenches, right? So, so far we have talked a lot about what AI means, uh, what the what is the data science behind it, um, and how it could potentially impact uh, the IT operations. But this is our opportunity to hear from directly from the horse's mouth, right? <laughs> so. Um, so Dan, you know, uh, let me just uh, turn over to you, um, and maybe you know one of the things that is always amazing about Coty is that Coty is a leader in beauty products. Uh, it's a very competitive industry, right? Yes, it is. So, how are you using AI and machine learning to set the bar higher in an industry that is already so competitive? What we're doing and what we, we've done in the very short term uh, in AI. I, I don't know if you want me to go directly to your question or go to the yeah, slides. Sure, yeah, okay, we'll do the slides yeah. first because yeah. I, I, I will address that. A yeah. uh, little bit about Cody, uh, just in case anyone knows. We're primarily manufacturing beauty products. We're a leader in the industry. Um, Next slide, yeah. Yep. yeah, yeah. Uh, we're in 150 plus countries, a ton of brands, and we try to make some money in the business. And we're doing pretty well at that. In our own environment, uh, what we started to do here is take together the cloud environments, what everyone's been talking about, the, the lake, all the bits and pieces that we've been collecting and working on for years and doing a pretty good job on the operations perspective and making that data available to the machine. And hopefully the machine will help guide us and not do it for us, but guide us into where are the problems, how best to address those problems. Uh, the, the journey we took to get here is rather interesting, and I think a lot of people in the industry are doing the same thing. You know, we've spent a lot of time getting our hands around the data center, the event yep. streams, the alarm streams, how many tickets get generated, and we've heard a lot about that this yep. morning, and the, yep. the same thing. And logs and other, right. yep. Mm. Right, and we're lucky at Cody in that we had the opportunity from the very beginning to limit the event flow. Yep. To say, yes, we're going to log this, we're going to dump it in the database, we're going to dump it in the lake, mm -hmm. but our operations side, the guys who keep the lights on, we're not going to overwhelm them. Yep. We're going to say, you know, the box is on fire, deal with that, do mm -hmm. it. Uh, over the years, we, we've gotten to the point now where we're, we've gone from an event-centric, reactive state to a service-centric. We, we can now look at that alarm and say that it impacts wireless service in Barcelona, or mm -hmm. it impacts payroll, or it impacts some application. So focus on what matters for the business rather than the plumbing. Correct, correct. Yeah. correct. And, and, but operations is still handling the plumbing. Yes. You know, but they do have a little vision into what that plumbing is affecting yep. now. Mm -hmm. And the next step, you know, operations will get an alarm, this, whatever's happening in the infrastructure, they might do some triage on that alarm, ultimately ticket and hand it off to an engineer. Mm -hmm. uh, what we're hoping in the AI platform is initially that they'll start to look at that triage step that they did, which in the old world they went and they pinged it and pulled it or yeah. whatever they needed to do, and say, okay, what's the machine telling me about this? Why is there a hot spot here? Mm -hmm. And maybe give more information to the engineer who is going to act on that. On the other side of the house, we have the huge data lake now that we've been sitting on, and we're trying to make that available to management, IT mm -hmm. management, who's really had no way of looking at other than looking in the meantime to resolution numbers, yep. you know, the yep. ticketing numbers, those yep. things. But they have no idea really that, you know, we're having some problem here and it's yep. related to that and it happens every Tuesday and uh, and acting on that. And that's really what we're looking so to So building a more that. stakeholder visibility, right? Right. Yeah. And yeah. we found that with the APM environment where there is anomaly detection today, 
that the engineers are starting to say, okay, I see that threshold got violated, I see the box is on fire, let me look at what the anomaly detection is. They're, they're making that first step into trusting the machine, and that's exciting. Yeah, that, yeah. that, I think, is how we're going to proceed here. Yeah, yeah. One of the most important things is the first point on this slide, and the first couple points on this slide is the quality of the data. And uh, that was touched on earlier. Uh, you've got to make sure you have quality data. You have to make sure that it's accurate, it's up to date, that it's coming from multiple sources, that you have logs, obviously. But more important than anything, if you have access to topology, your machine learning becomes much more smart. It, it now has the ability to say, my complex network has multiple ways to get from point A to point B, and just because there is an issue in the network doesn't mean my service was impacted. Mm -hmm. It may mean my service is at risk, yep. but it's not impacted, and you need topography. That's a key element to any vendor solution. I think that that's very, very important. Uh, and yep. eliminating the, the fears. You know, education is going to go a long way on that and doing it a step at a time. You don't want to get in the face of the driver of the Tesla uh, with a lot of information, but you do want to tell him he's getting too close to the wall. Yep. I think that's very important. Yep, yep. And that's... So that's great, uh, Dan. I think you touched on a couple of very interesting things. You know, first of all, you talked about, you know, while all the excitement about AI and machine learning is great, and then some, there is some real potential here, but the basics is all actually lies in the data, and you know how holistic the data is, how complete the data set is, and do you have the context on that data, right? Correct. So, um, so I guess I think you know one way to look at that is you know AI and machine learning cannot be just a layer that you kind of seamlessly slide on top without mm -hmm. actually having uh, a, a more context on the shape of the data, right? The color around the data and being able to seamlessly navigate from the intelligence layer down to the layers where the data is being captured and processed, right? Yeah, I think initially the, we're going to add color to that event. That operations is very good at processing that. Yeah. That's what they do. And, and we can't change that. We have to be careful. That's going to be a slow migration there. But we have to add more color to it for them so they're yeah. better at doing their job. Right, right. And that's one of the things that we are trying to do here at CA is that operational intelligence is a way for us to bring what used to be the siloed domains, mm. bring it all together, provide holistic end-to-end -end view, but with the seamless visibility down, right, to the mm -hmm. underlying layers. So if you see at a high level that you have a service level problem, and being able to just quickly go down to the layer, whether it's a server or network, and then from there go down to the actual the network tools, right, mm -hmm. to see and get more details, because, you know, this bi-directional communication is you know, that's very, a, very that's important. A, that's a key because there's a lot of vendors that are coming on market with AI solutions. Pop this black box in your network and everything will be wonderful. But the advantage you guys have is you have the ability to make it in the algorithms themselves to go back and say, tell me more. Yep, yep. And yep. Uh, that's, a, that's a key thing because that really adds good color to the yep, data. Yep, and you know, like I said, I think we have been in the business of collecting the data for many, many years. Mm -hmm. Nobody has as deep understanding, thanks to the partnership with customers such as yourself. And then operation intelligence becomes the next logical layer where we bring more insight and more, uh, you know, you know, able to handle uh, the large volumes of data and extract, you know, a handful of insights. There. Yep. Great. Now, Carl, uh, you are in a very unique vantage point, mm. right? You know, um, like I said, you have customers across 25 countries around the globe. We do. Um, now, the challenge that you have is your customers are at varied stages of uh, requirements as well as maturity, right? Yeah. So, uh, maybe, you know, you can walk us through your slides and tell us about how you are putting AI to use sure. to cater to this diverse need of your, you know, very, very rich and varied customer base. Yeah, I think we do get into a couple of uh, unique scenarios, so we'll kind of jump into okay. that. Okay. And uh, before I get started in the immortal words of Spinal Tap, hello Cleveland. So let's, uh, let's get to it. <laughs> uh, but I'll, I promise to keep the um, commercial to a minimum here, but I think it just does set up a little bit, if you know uh, what we do, how our case is a bit unique, because we are a customer of CAs, but also a partner. Yes. So our company, we started about 20 years ago, and our mission back then was really simple, to help our customers monitor their networks. So in the meantime, we've expanded and grown into a full service managed provider, and we have a cloud solution as well, both mm -hmm. our own and we offer other public clouds. 
So that gets us into a lot of really interesting different business use cases. And then really we operate everything on a 24 by 7 basis, so we're supporting all those customers and those enterprises around the world. So we do that all based out of our headquarter location and our operations center uh, in Cleveland. So we're, doing, we're running that three shifts um, year round. So, uh, and then we have more traditional services around platform and networking and systems on the more traditional kind of infrastructure side. So we get into a lot of professional and technical services. So we're delivering project management, we're delivering data center migrations, we're doing some of the more traditional things that are associated with managed services. But if you look at how we're kind of trying to manage that as a business and deliver our solutions to our clients, we're really in a unique opportunity to leverage some of the things that CA brings to the marketplace and how do we go about embedding that into the solutions yep. uh, that we yep. offer. Yep. And um, so I'll talk a little bit about how we do it today. So I talked about that operations center and that really serves as the heartbeat of our practice. So we run our service desk through there, so we're looking at alerts and monitoring not only our own environment, both our on-prem and cloud infrastructures, yep. but we're looking at our customers' environments yep. as well whether they're operating in a public cloud or, or in a hybrid situation. And in a lot of cases, we're also offering um, hosting services and SaaS solutions for other third parties. So we really get into some pretty quickly complex scenarios when you talk about having to kind of look at all of those different unique yep. Uh, yep. environments. Yep. So uh, the way we operate that all today is we have uh, a robust uh, CA stack of tools that allows us insights and to be able to take action across all of those different platforms. And so, as is, uh, we're in a great position. So it allows us to really holistically monitor all those environments, uh, whether, again, you're, you're spanning a private or a public scenario or anything kind of in between. And it gives us a certain level of a unified visibility yep. uh, into that environment, right? So yep. it allows us to really uh, try to approach it from a, a holistic yeah. uh, perspective. And which particular CA tools do you use? I think you have that in the slides somewhere, right? Yeah, so today um, we're, we uh, come at it from if a you, primarily a UIM perspective, right. yeah. and then um, yep. we also are using uh, NFA and Spectrum. Yeah. And so, you know, how can we uh, leverage what all of those things have to offer yeah. and put it together really in a more unified, cohesive manner you know, for our clients. Yeah, so so that really gets us into yeah. the why, yeah. why does uh, AI ops matter, yeah. right? And where yeah. are we trying to take, take yeah. the business? Yeah. So for us, it, it really uh, is a r around a couple of areas. So uh, ability to automate root cause, root cause analysis. That's real big for us because yeah. how do we lower the center of gravity for the way that we can triage problems for our customers? not only in our response times, but also in our resolution times. So that there's an impact uh, in terms of the customer experience, there's an impact in terms of their business operations, and also there's an impact in our cost and what we have to pass along in the solutions that we build and deliver uh, in the marketplace. And then part of that is around efficiencies. So how do we take those machine learnings and apply them to the work that we're providing? So. In the old days, or even today, the way you scale that is throw more people at it. Well, yep. that's really difficult to do, right? Yep. It's difficult to manage and find the right skill of people, and you can only do that. Yep. Uh, there's only so much elasticity yep. Yep. You know, in that. So finding efficiencies uh, in the tool sets through artificial intelligence and machine learning is really key to a company like us that allows us to really bring that to market and scale it you know, for our customers. And then it's really um, about actionable insights. So you talk about all these pools of data that we have, and it can be really overwhelming trying to manage that and use it in a productive way, right? So we look at how are we planning to move our business forward? What additional or incremental investments do we need to make in our environment? What kind of guidance can we give to our clients in terms of what their needs might be? How mm -hmm. can we anticipate that and be on the front end of the curve rather than being reactive all the time? Yep. So it's not just about the data for data's sake, but how do we you know, extract some actionable insights from it? Yeah. So we're really um, enthused about what uh, AI has to offer uh, in that area, and that's part of our journey and where we're going. So if you look at it um, you know, more broadly across our business, it really um, is helping us in kind of three primary ways, right? So if we look at, um, from an insight perspective, how can we leverage other resources um, 
and, and enable our operating center technicians to go deeper into solving the problem mm -hmm. before it's required Especially, an escalation yeah. to a level three yeah. or a more yeah. senior yeah. person. Yeah. And again, that affects responsiveness and efficiency yep. and the customer uh, experience. Then we look at, um, take a networking scenario for example. You know, how do we trace a problem uh, in a customer's environment to a network? How can we automate uh, a trigger uh, to, to action the problem that's been identified and then how does it get uh, resolved without a whole bunch of manual yep. intervention, mm -hmm. right? So the ability to automate some yes. of these things that uh, insights that we derive from the machine learning and AI is a critical yep. you know, factor yep. as well. Yep. And then we look at you know, load balancing. So often, how many times have we you know, throw proverbial hardware at a problem? That's only true. to find out later that it really didn't yes. do anything. Yes. And whether it's physical hardware or virtual hardware, it's the same. And in some situation, it could make the problem worse. Absolutely, right? yeah. absolutely. So you know, being able to look across you know, yeah. the app stack and all the different platform areas and really dr drill down to here's the yeah. problem yeah. and then address it in the right way the first time yeah. Yeah. Uh, rather than where we typically yeah. uh, and often wrongly assess those problems. Yeah. So yeah. that's the, where we're excited about uh, what's being delivered through the CA yeah. uh, tool sets and how we're yeah. integrating it um, into our business. Yeah. So as we've kind of started on that journey and I look at where are some of the things that, uh, how are we meeting those objectives and what are some of those uh, initial impressions. So. Again, we're getting great insight you know, from the data pools that we have and from the machine learning. Uh, so even though we're very early in our adoption of some of the operational intelligence tools and the way that we're integrating it, the early results are, are great in terms yeah. of you know, the insights. And then it also helps us in terms of how we're helping our clients transform IT. Yeah. Right? So, so much of uh, emphasis is always on keeping the lights on and all the chore that goes around operations and how do we help them move that into the more core elements of you know their business right so yep. we heard US Bank talking about how do they really deliver value and strategic advantage for their company well every industry has that same challenge and it manifests itself in a different and unique way yep. so how can we help move our clients in operations from those chore to core um, activities so and then for us it, it's we talk about scale right? yep. you, we're not going to go uh, hire a thousand people as much as I yeah. might like to go do that, right? So, how can we take these re these resources and assets and yeah. really help us uh, deliver yeah. at scale? Yeah, you know, um, Carl, this was very very insightful. So, I think that you know the number of things that you touched on. First of all, like Dan, you underlined uh, the importance of having uh, the basics right, which is, you know, AI is only as good as the underlying data, which is what Dan talked about, and the fact that. You know, you have uniform visibility across server infrastructure, network infrastructure, going down to the packet data, the flow data, the fault data, and the metrics and alarm that we capture, right? I think that's really the key. So I think building on that foundation, and then you also talked about some of the, um, you know, the key benefits, which I think applies to everyone. I think uh, we talked about being able to identify the problem early if we can, but even if we can't, once we know the problem, how can we just avoid shooting in the dark and get to the cause of the problem quickly sure. and resolve right? right? So, I think that means big thing for you as a service provider because mm -hmm. it enables you to you know de deliver better quality of service to your customers, and for the customer it means better business value, right? So I think you know that that's really the key. Uh, you know, cost is a concern for all of us, uh, not just purely because you know all of us at the end of the day it's about profitability, but like you said your skilled resources are very limited. And even if you have unlimited budget, right, you can find that many people, right? So yeah. being able to empower your you know, lower skilled resources, the network operation staff, to do as much of triaging possible mm. and only involve the specialists when required and also the right set of you know, specialists, right. that's really the key. And the third thing, I think it goes back to the point that Dan, you also made, that once you have all this data, uh, the, all the IT data, and you can commingle that with any kind of business KPIs. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, you open a gold mine of information for your business stakeholder, which is the business insights, right? And which is so critical because increasingly our businesses are becoming digital, right? So we do probably as much business online as we do in stores, probably more going into the future. So right. 
in the absence of human contact, your digital data lake actually just becomes your conduit to learning more about your customers. So that's, you know, I think this is fabulous. I think uh, both of you have pointed out a very pragmatic, practical, and a step-by-step -step journey on how you start from wherever you are today to adopting AI in a practical manner and then set some objective goals. Uh, but particularly, Carl, you know, because you are, a, you are a customer on your own because you run your data center. Yeah. On top of that, you provide services to your customers, and then you are also a SaaS hosting um, services company. So, right. you know, I think in many ways your challenges are like you know aggregation of challenges <laughs> that we see across a diverse customer base. So. Sure. What advice that you would have for your peers without spilling any of your competitive <laughs> secrets, right? But yeah. I'm sure there are other people in the audience who are thinking, okay, well, how should I start from, and you know, how should I go about, you know, beginning this journey? Sure. Well, I'll start by giving CA some credit. So, for example, our clients are challenging us: how do I homogenize heterogeneous data, right? Yeah. And so you can't do that if the only way, the only thing you can use is a CA stack. Yeah. So I give you guys a lot of credit for making the environment open, open yep. and having third party integrations. Yeah. So in order to really deliver robust solutions today, you have to be able to you know, cast a wide net. And you know, we also see from our use case, the, you know, adding multi-tenancy features and things like that really make it more easy for us to integrate these into our solutions and then deliver those into the market. So that provides value to clients in terms of how we uh, integrate the technologies, but in terms of I advice, you know, we often uh, we use the phrase "festina lente," which means loosely tra translated means "make haste slowly." And so, you know, we talk about agility and talking yeah. about Scrum and and how you might go through product development, right? We talk about how do we do things, you know, and bring them uh, to market and react, you know, quickly, but do it in a, in a thoughtful. Uh, and, and comprehensive way. And so we, we try to follow that ethos. Uh, and so I, I say that uh, is a little bit of a piece of advice without uh, sharing anything <laughs> uh, too special. The other thing, I would, uh, and Dan talked about you know, the data. So the input you get is, is the output is going to be no better than the input. Yes. So we took a lot of extra time to make sure we started with a clean slate. And so we had um, enough of a legacy that it mattered to take that step. You know, we're relatively young, 20 years old, but there's still enough legacy there where in order to really go after operational intelligence in the right way and ensure the right outcome, that we made sure we started clean. So, yep. so it'll add a little bit of time, it'll add a little bit of work, but it's, I think, a really necessary step when you're going to start uh, in the uh, journey around leveraging yeah. AI and machine learning. I, I love the term, make haste slow. Right? <laughs> slow That's yeah. great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, great. Um, so you know, a question for both of you. Um, you know, given how far you have come along in your AI journey, and you, even though I say far, I think as practitioner, you'll always say that you're already the beginning, right? <laughs> yeah. um, what does it mean for future of IT ops, right? How does IT ops, you know, the role of IT ops change in the future? Again, one of the other phrases that I borrowed, which is from chores to core, right? Mm. Which is, uh, you know, any, 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 can, can you elaborate on what it means for IT becoming much more strategic player, you know, towards their business goals, right? Yeah, we, and Dan knows this uh, better than I do, you know, we're being asked to do more with less you know, all the time. So you still have the burden of legacy, you still have the burden of making sure everything is operationally sound. But you add on top of it all the complexities of modern business, managing multiple cloud right. environments, security. And so how do you extract yourself from the things that bog you down, that just keep you going, and, and be able to leverage the scarce resources that you have uh, and apply those in a meaningful way to the business. That are, and so, you know, the core is not around, um, and not around the technology stack itself, itself, yeah. itself but it's around, it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's around what it, what do yeah. you, what's unique to your industry yeah. Yeah. and how do you help your company yeah you know, grow yeah. or do something yeah. uh, competitive. Yeah. I don't see AI as, as making a lot of decisions. Uh, I think that'll take a long time till we trust the machine to mm -hmm. let Hal open the pod pay yeah. doors. <laughs> uh, but I think uh, what, what we're seeing is that IT management has, has started to ask us to, you know, in the business, supplement their decisions. Show yeah. us real numbers, real facts, real projections uh, that are going on. 
And the other side of it is on the operation side of the house is to help them keep the lights on. Yep. Give mm -hmm. them more information so they can make better decisions, open better tickets, and yep. uh, everybody gets smarter from it. Yep. I, I think if we introduce those bits slowly and not upset the apple cart, I, I think we, we can make this succeed. Yep. Really you know, well. so you know, move towards more data driven and decision making, right? Which is which is really the key. Uh, finally, I think you guys have both been excellent partners. So how would you summarize your you know, journey with CS so far, right? It's been fun. I mean, <laughs> I think that's the best way to put it. Yeah. No, one of the things that I found with uh, the partnership we have with CA is that you guys listen. You know, I have access through CA that I don't have with any other vendor. Uh, I, I can pick up the phone and, and, and call any of you guys. Yeah. <laughs> really, and, and that's unheard of. Yeah. And the other side of it is, and again to your credit, is a lot of the things that we've pointed out over the years, whether I'm with Cody or somewhere else in these tools, have found their way into the tools. Yep. And, and this piece specifically, and yeah. two years ago at CA World, we yeah. were talking about search capabilities yeah, and how yeah. could you add it so that yeah. I can go backwards yeah. into these tools. Yeah. And it's there now. Yeah. Yeah. Scott? Yeah, I, I would second a lot of that. So, you know, we have a fairly unique model. CA has really done a lot to orient themselves to the unique requirements of service providers. So whether we're talking about our, you know, uh, working with CA as a traditional reseller, whether we're talking about the use case uh, around as a service provider or in the professional services space. So we're fortunate to have a multi-layered relationship, you know, with CA. But, we, but you guys have really done a nice job of taking that input and turning it into business models mm -hmm. you know, that work for us. And the same thing on the product side. We talked about multi-tenancy a little bit earlier. Right? Some of the core underlying products that we use don't have a multi-tenancy legacy. Yeah. But as you get into and enhance the operational intelligence products, you've taken that into consideration yep. in terms of the openness and the way that you've yep. designed it. So, We've been really pleased with, with that as well. Well, thank you so much. You know, we exist to serve your needs. I think <laughs> your success is our success. Careful what but, you say. Uh, <laughs> no, absolutely. We mean it. But once again, you know, thank you, gentlemen, for being here, for sharing your very uh, hands-on perspective, but most importantly, for continued collaboration. We, we really value you. Thank so, you. Pleasure. Yeah. Thank you thank so you. much for watching. Um, I hope you found this discussion enlightening and as, as enlightening as I found. Uh, we have a great session coming up, which is, you know, how AI and automation is transforming the lives of SREs. So as they say in TV, don't change the channel. Stay tuned. Thank you.